Hi everyone. So as we get deeper into the course, we start to take a much closer look at how consumer behavior changes um, when we are considering multicultural audiences. And we also will get to take a look at how the marketing mix changes as we attempt to reach multicultural customers. Um, so for most people, and I'm guessing everybody has taken um, a basic marketing course, you would have some um, knowledge of the four P's, product, price, place, promotion, which we call the marketing mix. Now, of course, we um, have been exposed to campaigns and we can see how the four P's are used. So what are the four P's? First P is the product, which is the design, development, branding, packaging, laboring, the actual product itself that is being offered to the customer or consumer. Price, of course, is how much the customer gets to pay um, for that product or service or bundle of benefits that they um, are hoping to consume. Then there is place. Where do we make the product available for the customer? Because, of course, um, no product um, is 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 truly on the market until it's available for sale and so we have brick and mortar stores we also have um, the online environment we know that there's also um, personal sales you know the door-to-door -door salesman telephone sales um, via TV as well so there are multiple ways that brands are made available to customers and that's also one of the decisions that has to be made by companies we also have of course promotion how do we, one, inform customers of or products to give them enough information that they will actually consider making a purchase or at least trying the, per the, the product um, at least once? And then, of course, how do we get them to repeatedly make purchases? And so when we think about promotions, we think about public relations, we think about sponsorships, right? We think about tra trade um, sales promotion, personal selling, advertising, um, and the list goes on. Um, so as we can see, the, the marketing mix is, you know, the same marketing mix that everybody knows about, but how does that change in the case of the multicultural consumer? So let's start with product. When we think about product, um, what are some of the decisions that have to be made when we consider, okay, I'm going to offer this product to a different market. So whether that different market is domestic or that different market is international, there are certain decisions that have to be made about the product. And one of the major decisions, it has to do with um, uh, changes that are made to the actual product. So is it possible to sell a standardized product? So the product itself remains unchanged, Product and packaging and labeling, all of that remains unchanged regardless of the markets that we're selling to. Um, and in some instances, it is possible for the product to remain unchanged and be on the shelves and multi-coach and we change other aspects of the marketing mix. So you have the standardized product, which is the unchanged product. Then we have product adaptation, where we make other variants or forms of the product that cater to different ethnic markets or different market segments. Um, Miwella talks about band-aids being a very good example. So what band-aid has done is come up with different shades of the bandages so that depending on the tone of the skin, persons can um, get a nude color that is actually nude based on their skin tone. So that is just one way that we see adaptation occurring. But then there is also customization, where the product that is currently being offered is, is, is not appropriate for a multicultural market. And in that instance, a brand new product is created for that market segment. And the example that Miwella uses is phone plans. And we have seen where international calling plans have been developed by local companies. Um, she talks about Sprint, but um, T-Mobile, AT&T, a lot of these companies do that were um, because of the uh, strong Hispanic population, the strong um, immigrant population in, in the U.S., they understand that um, persons need to make calls and connect with family members oh, in, in, in their um, home country or in their parents' home country. They still have these strong connections. And so they have developed brand new products that are really for those persons who would be making those calls. And 
essentially those are multicultural consumers. We also see um, another really cool example is the growth in the natural hair product for African-American women who choose not to um, chemically process their hair. Um, we have Carol's Daughter, we have Shea Moisture, um, and so we are seeing a lot of um, products now that are created specifically for women of color, um, women with natural hair, and so we see all of those products, and so we are seeing where there is that customization. Um, of course, there is that balance that companies have to strike because, of course, um, it is cheaper to make a standardized product and sell it to everybody. Um, you benefit from getting economies of scale, and that is when the cost of production is spread over more and more units. And so a lot of companies want to benefit from economies of scale. And so normally the rule of thumb is you standardize when you can, and then you customize or adapt when you have to. And so that requires, of course, research and analysis, understanding the cultures, the cultural values, the consumption patterns and needs of the consumers that you're targeting. And that will help to make that decision about um, customization. Of course, when we do product adaptation, it doesn't have to be that the product itself remains, um, is, is, is changed. It could also mean that based on the language needs of the target consumer, you have to do dual um, languages on product packaging. And so we have seen, um, by and large now, most product labels now have um, at least two languages on the packaging, and that is to cater to those audiences that would prefer to read directions in another language. And the most common language that we see on products made in the U.S. is, of course, Spanish. So you see English and Spanish, and that allows um, brands to minimize the amount of changes that they have to make to a product packaging because the product packaging now, um, persons based on language preference, they are able to read directions in both languages or the label, um, the um, additional information that's available on the package. So that's a really, really good example. So when we talk about place, right, we, um, as we get close, we get, as we get deeper into the, the, the readings that we have for the course, you will realize that depending on the ethnic group of the consumer, they shop in different places. And um, we also consider that um, there is the opportunity, if we know where consumers shop, to make certain products available to them more so than in other areas, right? Um, for example, when we look at the concentration of, for example, the Hispanic population, persons of Caribbean descent, African Americans, we might find that, for example, the Walmarts, um, the products that are available on the shelves may be a little bit different. So you do have the standard product, but there will be um, a lot more ethnic products that are made available. Um, additionally, when you think about it, um, if the there are certain groups where customers shop not in the mainstream big chain supermarkets. They go to their um, independently owned supermarkets, the bodegas, um, convenience stores. Um, and so because of that, you have to take into consideration um, where your customer shops and make sure that the product is available there, right? And so in terms of multicultural consumers, that is something that has to be considered. We cannot rely on or standard distribution channels to get the product to the multicultural consumer. It may mean that um, you have to work on developing distribution channels and distribution networks that cover more deeply the bodegas, the ethnic-specific grocery stores, the um, convenience stores, because based on groups, people shop in different places. And so that is definitely um, something that you have to take into consideration. Of course, with um, the proliferation of online, we have a lot of persons being able to have online shops, right? And so that also creates a wonderful opportunity for brands who now can do um, who can do um, English language versus Spanish language websites for e-commerce, right? And be able to provide, for example, customer service in Spanish via phone or online. Um, all the selling information is available in another language. Um, so e-commerce makes it a lot more 
um, a lot easier for place to be modified um, to basically meet the needs of a multicultural consumer. Of course, then there is price. Um, by and large, when we look at products in the U.S., um, especially fast-moving consumer goods, what we see is standardized pricing. So um, the prices tend to be the same, you know, regardless of who shops there because, you know, a store can't say, okay, because you're from this ethnic group, I'm going to give you this price, and because you're from this ethnic group, I'm going to give you this price. Um, but, however, just so that we are clear, in, in many instances, um, there are opportunities for not just standardized pricing, but also differentiated pricing um, based on... Um, based on certain groups. So let's go back to the example of international calling plans. Um, because, again, international calling plans in many instances are geared towards certain ethnic groups, it gives brands and, and, and these companies the opportunity to create pricing that is more affordable. Um, and so they take into consideration the um, affordability aspect of that product and they may um, consider that, for example, um, the median household income um, and, of course, purchasing power of some of these groups is not as high, right, as other groups. And so they create these plans and then they um, price them at competitive prices so that they can not only one, compete with competitors, but two, that their target audience can actually afford the plans and products that are made available. And so that is definitely something that you take into consideration as well. Um, by and large, a lot of the, um, the changes that we see when it comes to um, modifying a marketing mix for the multicultural consumer actually occurs in the promotion sphere. So when we think of sponsorships, we know that, for example, um, a lot of these major companies um, are huge sponsors of various organizations, various community initiatives. So for example, Walmart has done excellently in connecting with the Hispanic consumer because they have a scholarship program um, that is specifically for the Hispanic community. Um, we also know that, for example, um, certain foundations tend to um, try to sponsor a different scholarship program that are specifically for certain ethnic groups. So, for example, the Ford Foundation, they do scholarships that are really specifically for minorities and the MacArthur Foundation, and that is funded through corporate entities. And so, so through those sponsorships, they are able to do that. Of course, advertising is one of the most common things that we see, and so we see where we, we, we have ethnic specific ads, whether they are in language, meaning in another language that is attended for another group, or they're in culture, meaning they're using those cultural insights um, to make that emotional connection. And so when we look at multicultural ads, we not only look at ads that are in language, meaning, oh, the la this ad is in another language, so it's meant for another audience, but we look at in culture, meaning what are those cultural insights, the cultural undertones that are meant to make that emotional connection. Um, and so that is definitely huge. One of the things, too, that we have to really pay attention to, um, and we see it, is product placement. Um, I, do, I don't know if you've ever watched a movie and you've seen, like, this person drinking, you know, a particular brand of soda or driving a particular car and you can see the branding um, in it. That is a part of the multicultural space. Um, there is uh, this movie that I think it came out in 2040, Mark Farland, USA, and it was a Disney movie. There was a lot of Coca-Cola product placement in that ad. And Coca-Cola is one of those brands that has a very, very strong multicultural operation. And they actually do um, make every effort, not just through sponsorship and scholarships and ads, and we know that we've seen a lot of Coca-Cola commercials, but also do product placement in movies and TV, um, so media that is being watched by multicultural audiences. It's a, There are opportunities for brands to place products in those um, movies and, and commercials, not just commercials, movies and TV shows, and even video games. Um, and that will expose 
those persons to the brand. Um, one of the other things that is 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 really um, taking off right now is not just word of mouth in the traditional sense. So when we normally think about word of mouth, we think about uh, someone having a very good experience with a brand and telling a friend or a neighbor about it. In a lot of these groups, especially among Hispanics, um, uh, African Americans, and also Asian Americans, these cultures are a lot more close knit. When we get a little bit um, into the next chapter, we will read about individualism versus collectivism. So highly collective, highly collectivist cultures also have um, very strong reference group influencers. And reference groups are pretty much persons who we look to as models of behavior. And so those persons become the experts or whether that person is an aspirant, th 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 that reference group is aspirational, meaning we want to be like these people. And so we try to emulate their behaviors or those persons are part of our group that we are currently members of. And so we look to them for um, advice on what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. And so families and friends do play a very important role in terms of being referenced for um, multicultural consumers, especially Hispanics, um, more so than most of the other groups that we will talk about. You will see that there is a strong reference group influence um, among Hispanics. And so we normally talk about, um, you know, that family influence or friend influence, reference group influence, one of the things that is creating um, an opportunity for word of mouth to go beyond just a conversation is social media. Um, we are members of so many groups. We have connections to so many people online. And so when someone has an experience with a brand and they're able to share that with friends and family, not just... Um, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but on a larger scale, sharing that information with a, 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 a much bigger group of people, we are able to generate buzz around a brand, right? And so um, online and social media is creating even more opportunities for that word of mouth. And that is something that is extremely powerful, right? And so we cannot um, even begin to... Um, underscore how important that is. And so the the, the, the the whole purpose behind word of mouth is to influence the influencers, right? Generate that buzz around that brand. And this is not just about a positive um, experience, but it's also about, you know, sweepstakes and stuff like that, that using promotions to make samples available, free products available, so that persons can try them, share their experiences. We see a ton of those product demonstrations, um, Persons using social media to talk about, you know, something that they have tried, give product reviews. And so that helps to generate that buzz. And that becomes extremely important in the case of multicultural consumers. Um, so that's just a broad overview of kind of how the four P's are modified. I really want for everybody to go ahead and read chapter two of Mueller to get uh, an even deeper understanding of some of the concepts that I discussed. She goes into more detail about product standardization, adaptation, customization. She talks a lot about st pricing strategies. Um, and so she'll talk about skimming strategy, penetration strategy. And so you want to go ahead and take a look at that. This video cannot give you all the information that you need. Um, one of the things that we underscore, however, is the importance of integrated marketing communications. All the four P's need to be integrated. They need to seamlessly com communicate with the consumer the same thing. It doesn't make sense if your um, advertising is saying one thing, right? But your pricing is saying something else. So if you are advertising that you are a value brand, then in many instances, people expect pricing to be affordable, right? Um, it is also um, very important that your... Um, multicultural campaign is going to be in sync to some extent to your mainstream campaign meaning you don't want to be saying one thing to your multicultural audience about your brand and you're saying something completely different about your brand to your mainstream audience because especially if you are doing um, language specific um, marketing campaigns then in many instances, it reduces the amount of trust people have in, for example, let's use Hispanics as an example, Spanish language advertising. Because in many instances, if, 
for example, the translation is poor, then you're not communicating the same information. And two, if you're not using consistent messaging across the, the groups, then what will happen is that people feel as if you are trying to deceive them. And so they're less likely to trust, for example, Spanish language um, advertising, Spanish language instruction, Spanish language information. They'd rather get the English language version because they doubt the quality and they doubt the truthfulness. And that happens because in many instances, we, the multicultural campaigns are not integrated meaning the messaging is not consistent and if the messaging is not consistent then it becomes problematic because the, because then it is inauthentic there is the issue of trust that we have to take into consideration um so that's basically all on the discussion of the marketing mix as i said please take a look at chapter two of Mueller, and i will be talking to you next about culture's influence all right take care and bye